In this video, we will understand the decay and volatility drag of leveraged ETFs by doing a detailed comparison of QQQ versus TQQ performance. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only and should not be considered investment advice. Please consult a certified financial advisor before making any investment or trading decisions. QQQ tracks the popular NASDAQ 100 index, while TQQ is a triple leveraged ETF tracking the same index. When the NASDAQ 100 goes up 2%, QQQ goes up 2%, and TQQQ goes up 6%. If the next day the NASDAQ goes down 2%, QQQ goes down 2%, TQQ goes down 6%. Let's look at a scenario where the NASDAQ is falling for two days and then rises back to the original level. If it drops 2%, QQQ will come down 98 and TQQ will drop 6% lower to 94. If it drops another 3%, QQ will be down to 95.06 and TQQQ will be at 85.5. Now, if the NASDAQ 100 bounces back 5.19% the next day, QQQ will return to the original level. However, TQQQ will be at 98.85, approximately 1.15% short of the original level. This illustrates the decay of leveraged ETFs, as they are calculated based on daily returns and can erode value in a falling market. Let's look at some recent performance. In late July and early August 2024, the NASDAQ corrected close to 15%. QQQ dropped from 482 on July 22nd to 434 on August 7th. During the same period, TQ dropped from 73.92 to 53.22. Now QQQ has recovered back to 482 on August 21st, but on the same day, TQQ's closing price was 7170, roughly 3% below due to decay. Let's consider an uptrend phase. From May 1st until July 10th, QQQ rallied from 421 to 502, roughly a 20% gain. During the same period, TQQQ rallied from 51.63 to 84.61, roughly a 63% gain. During a bull run, leveraged ETFs can maintain their multiplier return beyond a day, but during a correction phase, the value can erode due to decay. Depending on the duration of the correction, the return can vary drastically. TQQQ had a lifetime high of 88 in November 2021, when QQQ was at 383. Since then, QQ has risen and reached a high of 502, a 40% gain. During the same period, TQQ was around 84, flat to 3% lower. This indicates that while the fund gives 3x returns beyond a day during a bull phase, it could lose out when the market experiences periodic rises and corrections. Does this mean one should invest in leveraged ETF for the long term? It depends on the instrument. As far as TQQQ is concerned, if you believe in the growth story and that the NASDAQ will continue to rise, it makes sense. When a correction happens, TQQQ provides a good entry opportunity. Let's look at a simple dollar cost averaging return of QQQ versus TQQ over the last one year, five years, and 10 years. Let's pull one year of data for QQQ from Yahoo Finance. We will select a time period of one year and a monthly interval to calculate returns for a monthly systematic investment scenario. Download the CSV file. Upload the CSV file to ChatGPT and ask it to provide the dollar cost averaging return for one year. If you had invested $1,000 every month, 
the approximate return would have been 13%. We will follow the same steps to generate a one-year return for TQQQ based on a monthly $1,000 investment. The return is approximately 32%. Note that during this calculation, the NASDAQ 100 is close to an all-time high, but over the past year, we have seen mostly bullish phases with 5 to 10% short-term corrections. Depending on the phase you are in, the return could vary significantly. Now, if we do a similar dollar cost averaging for 5 years and 10 years, this is what we get. One hundred thirteen percent in TQQQ over five years versus fifty four percent in QQQ. Five hundred fifty two percent return in TUQQQ over ten years versus two hundred thirteen percent in QQQ. Provided you don't pull out money during corrections, TQQ dollar cost averaging returns have been greater than QQQ over a long period of time. If you're a slightly sophisticated investor or trader, you can consider taking a position when the NASDAQ 100 is above its 50 DMA using a staggered buy-sell approach, which we've explained in another video. You can find the link in the description. If you're more of a passive investor, you can use dollar cost averaging after conducting your own research. We also have a video describing how to day trade ETFs and leveraged ETFs, and you can find the link in the description below. In that video, we explain how to determine whether it's going to be a long or short day and how to trade in a way that minimizes your losses and maximizes your gains during day trading. Thank you for watching. This content is for educational and entertainment purposes only. We do not recommend buying or selling any of these instruments or applying any of these strategies without consulting a certified financial advisor. Subscribe to our channel for more informative content in the future. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to receive notifications.